Hi, this is Alan Moore, Certified Financial Planner and Founder of Serenity Financial Consulting. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a financial literacy quiz. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. We're going to walk through a five question quiz to test your financial knowledge. And don't cheat. I don't know how you actually do. So, and I apologize, I'm going to be reading these questions because I don't want to uh, mess anything up so you can't blame your uh, correct or incorrect answers on me. First question. Suppose you have $100 in a savings account earning 2% interest a year. After five years, would you A, have more than $102, B, have less than $102, I'm sorry, B, have exactly $102, C, have less than $102, or D, you don't know? Question number two. Imagine that the interest rate on your savings account is 1% a year and inflation is 2% a year. After one year, would the money in the account buy a, more than it does today, B, exactly the same as it does today, C, less than it does today, or D, don't know. Question number three. If interest rates fall, what happens to bond prices? A, bond prices will rise, B, bond prices will fall, C, bond prices will stay the same, D, there's no relationship, or E, don't know. Question number four, true or false? A 15-year mortgage typically requires monthly payments that are higher than, a, than the monthly payments of a 30-year mortgage, but the total interest over the life of the loan will be less. A, true, B, false, or C, don't know. And the final question, true or false, buying a single company stock usually provides a safer return than a stock mutual fund. A, true. B, false, C, don't know. Okay, so depending on where you're watching this, if you're on YouTube, the answers are in the description. If you're on the blog, just check within the blog and you'll see uh, the answers at the bottom of the post. So I want you to add up how many did you get correct, how many were you incorrect on, and how many did you mark don't know. Okay, so I want you to give yourself a grade real quick. So this quiz was given to over 30,000 Americans nationwide. Uh, and the results, in my opinion, were less than ideal. Okay, on a national average, uh, people answered three correctly, one incorrect, and uh, had one that they didn't know. So I would contend that these questions really get at the heart of some of the basic financial topics that people need to know, but many times are not being taught. Okay, so the first question uh, is testing your your understanding of interest. So. The question was about if, if it's earning 2% interest, are you going to have more or less after five years? Each year, interest compounds. Okay, Albert Einstein called compounding interest the eighth wonder of the world because basically compound interest means whenever you earn interest in year one, your interest then earns interest in year two. So your interest is earning you interest over the life of, of your savings. And basically, this is why the earlier you start saving, the better, because you can basically reap the benefits of compounding interest. The second question tests your understanding of inflation. Now, inflation is kind of a difficult concept, but at its root, inflation is your purchasing power. It's your ability to buy something. It's how much your dollar, the value of your dollar changes over time. So each year that there is inflation, and which is pretty much every year, your dollar is going to buy less. Now we see this, you can think back uh, when Coca-Cola was a dollar for a 20 ounce, now it's a dollar for like a 16 ounce or even a 12 ounce, depending on where you're at. That's because your dollar is buying less, not that the Coca-Cola is getting more expensive. So for instance, if you have 3% inflation, a dollar isn't gonna be able to buy $1 of, of stuff next year, it's gonna be able to buy, let's say 97 cents worth of stuff next year, okay? So if your interest rate is lower than the inflation rate, even though your money is growing with interest, it's not keeping up with inflation. So therefore your dollar is gonna be worth less next year than it is this year. The third question is probably the one that you'll have the toughest time finding applicable, okay? Talking about bond prices and, and interest rates. But I would, I would challenge you that understanding the way that interest rates affect directly affect bond prices is necessary if you're going to ever invest in the bonds market. Okay, when interest rates go up, bond prices fall. And this is kind of this is an incredibly difficult concept. There's a lot of financial advisors out there that have a difficult time understanding this concept. 
So let's just break it down. If Let's say I own a $1,000 bond that pays 6% interest. And you come to me and you say, Alan, I want to buy that bond. I say, okay, I'll sell it to you for $1,000. But then you realize your interest rates have gone up. So there's a guy down the road who says, well, I have a $1,000 bond at 8% interest. It's higher than the interest rate Alan's bond's paying, and I'll sell it to you for $1,000. And you come back and you say, Alan, I really want to buy your bond. But I want, are you really going to pay $1,000 even though my bond has 2% less interest than the guys down the road? Probably not. So you're going to pay me less than $1,000, let's say $950, to make up for the fact that my bond has less is going to be earning less interest. Okay, so the value of my bond has fallen because interest rates have gone up. The fourth question goes at the heart of the 15-year versus 30-year mortgage question. Okay, this question comes up all the time. Should I take out a 15-year mortgage? Should I take out a 30-year mortgage? What you need to know is that 15-year mortgage payments are going to be higher than 30-year payments because you're paying it in half the time, but your payments will not be double. Okay, you're not going from a $500 payment with a 30-year mortgage to a $1,000 payment with a 15-year mortgage. It, it is not that extreme because traditionally interest rates are lower for 15-year mortgages and you're going to be paying a lot less interest over the life of the loan. So what you need to know is that the monthly payments are going to be higher, but the total interest is going to be significantly less. The fifth and final question is testing your understanding of diversification. So owning a single company stock is a lot riskier than owning a stock mutual fund that may own hundreds if not thousands of company stock. Now imagine Coca-Cola, uh, you have all of your portfolio savings in Coca-Cola and one day the United States says, you know what, Coca-Cola is unhealthy and we're just going to ban it. No one in the United States can drink it anymore. Okay, Coca-Cola stock is going to tank. And if Coca-Cola stock tanks and all of your money is in Coke, your stock is going to tank as well. Your entire portfolio is gone. But imagine you own a stock mutual fund where Coca-Cola is one of a thousand holdings. Is your portfolio going to be affected? A little bit. The value of that mutual fund may drop just a little bit, but you're not going to be nearly as affected because you own a thousand companies instead of just one. So owning uh, a diversified portfolio of a lot of stocks is going to be much less risky than owning a single stock in one company. So while I was in graduate school, I actually did a pretty fair amount of research on financial literacy. What I can tell you is we don't know the answer to how to increase financial literacy, how to actually teach financial education in our schools, uh, in the workplace. We, we don't have a good answer. Um, right now, my way of, of trying to share financial education is through this blog, through these videos, uh, and your way, hopefully, is if there's something that you're learning by reading this blog, I hope you share it. Uh, particularly with the younger generation, uh, because I think that that's a generation that's missing out on a lot of financial education uh, for whatever the reason. Um, so anyway, so what do you think? How did your scores compare to the national average? Do you think the national average scores are good? Are they bad? Do they even matter? Uh, definitely share your thoughts in the comments section. That's all I have for today. Thanks so much for joining me.